in Jesus name friends we have a critical topic to look upon today I want to introduce it I checked my Bible um, from book to book I found no other scripture having sufficient stature with which to introduce the subject of this weekend other than the book of 2 Timothy precisely in chapter 3 I'd like you to turn and when you have so done you have liberty to welcome your neighbor to the house of God now I want you to do that now with all modesty because we are going somewhere where you will even forget that someone is sitting close to you. Acknowledge the person's tie if the person has one. Acknowledge the head do. Took time to, to bring it out. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my God. Acknowledge it with a smile. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's a critical topic. Five years ago, the Lord told me to study on this line. And I went to um, the bookshop, the bookstore, to get every book I could find on this subject. Unfortunately, after getting all the books, I found out that the books did not have what I wanted. And so I waited on God for him to teach me himself. This is five years now. And I, I, I come to share with you the things I've learned from the Lord himself. And also from... Or senior brethren in the body of Christ that have deeper insight in this subject. And this is a compendium that I was able to bring to us. I pray it will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the deliverance ministry of Jesus. Now you see, you know, five years ago when God was saying that I should prepare myself because you know, I meticulously decided to ab avoid the deliverance ministry i cast out devils hallelujah and all of that but god was able to convincingly reveal to me that there were four things that jesus did while in his earthly ministry now i need you to understand something in these sessions anybody that has a demonic problem from outright madness to any kind of demonic issue this is the time for you to bring them okay god will show himself strong in these days in jesus mighty name and so god was was preparing me to enter into the deliverance ministry to teach about it, to bring the consciousness of it in the body of christ but i escaped the reason was because the practice of the deliverance ministry right now in this nation I consider to be erroneous hallelujah it has steeped and it is beveled by error and so I had to escape but you see not for too long because the Lord came to me and he began to give me insight into the fourfold part of Jesus' ministry first thing jesus did was that he he taught second thing he did is that he preached third thing he did is that he healed and the fourth thing he did is that he casted out devils and if we decide to avoid casting out devils we have exempted one fourth of jesus's ministry when jesus was finishing his agenda upon the face of the earth in the book of matthew chapter 28 he gave us what we call the great commission actually was an apostolic commission it was given to just the apostles if you are still with me say amen, amen. we share in that commission but the original recipients of the commission were what apostles okay notice after that jesus said go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit he now said teaching them to observe 
all that I have told you, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of time. Now, what is what Jesus meant by by saying, teaching them to observe all the things that I've taught you, is that he was not intending that his pattern will be modified. There was no room for modification. And it was after he gave that instruction that he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of time. That means, as far as my teachings are concerned, teach the same thing until the end of time. There's no room for modification as far as that is concerned. And by the time you see the apostles that were original recipients of that commission, when we study their ministry and study their teachings, and we look upon the book of Acts of the Apostles, we see that the teachings and the patterns of Jesus were never, never modified. Are you still with me? Now, see, in countries like America, you, you, you are a civilized preacher if you can avoid casting out devils. It, it's a something of civilization. Amen. If we take an inventory right now or a questionnaire around this hall, who is your best American preacher? <laughs> you are likely to mention somebody's name that it doesn't cast out devils. That is the kind of pattern that we have accepted by, uh, by reason of political correctness. Meanwhile, it's a deviation from the pattern that Jesus gave us. In fact, the Bible reveals that the first sign by which believers will be identified is that you find them doing what? casting out devils. He said, these signs will follow. Now, you see, signs, if you are giving somebody signs as to how to identify people, he didn't give them names. He gave them what? Signs by which believers in his name will be identified. It's just like, okay, uh, the first time I flew from Lagos to Enugu Airport. I've never been in metropolis. All right, because my destination was Magrigo in Ebony State. So, my link, my easiest flight link or my nearest flight link was the Enugu Airport. From that point, I will need somebody to take me to a park where I can connect with Ebony State. And so, I had to call some of my friends. Do you know anybody in Enugu? They say, Yes, we know a, a, one pastor, Pastor Freeman. He will come and pick you. But you see, I, I didn't know how Freeman looks. Okay? So I had a challenge. When I came down from the airport, his line was, his number was not going. So I knew I was in trouble. Hallelujah. But fortunately for me, when I walked out of the, the luggage room, Freeman had my name written on a placard. There was no way I could miss that. He used a sign to get me to identify him. Jesus said, you don't know these guys. They don't look like it. But if you look enough, if you look long enough, you'll find out that they do what? They cast out demons. By that sign, you will know that these ones believe in my name. And, you know, casting out devils, devils is, is something so significant. Because in the Old Testament, nobody casted out devils. It's only something that you find within the context of the New Testament practice. Secondly, it is only when demons are casted that people are afforded a visible perspective of the battle between light and darkness and, and how that light is superior to darkness. And that's why the devil doesn't want people to cast out devils. He, he has made it politically correct for preachers to decide that it's no longer contemporary 
for demons to be casted out. But Jesus said, teaching them to observe all things that I've taught you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of time. Now, so we are going to look at Jesus' practice of the deliverance ministry. Just four snapshots, then we go into our lecture. I'll be teaching for two days and on the third day we'll hold a deliverance service. Everything I teach, you will see it manifest. But you see, the Holy Spirit has liberty to change my agenda. I'll fall on you tonight. Because I'm already feeling strange signs of it, even now. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, so let me do what I can do before he, he comes. Because he's the Lord, he knows the way better. Turn with me quickly to the book of Matthew chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. As we just begin a lecture, I want to start this lecture. Please, if you are a believer in Jesus, I would like you to turn your Bible anytime we request such. Because I am showing you how to fully sustain the identity of a Christian that Jesus recommended to the world. These signs shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark. And please, okay, maybe before, I'm sorry. Go to 2 Timothy. Let me show you something. Let me show you why this topic is necessary. Why is it necessary for us to know about demons and how to deal with them, how to identify them, even without the gift of word of knowledge or discernment of spirit? Amen. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'd like to do a reading. Please take note of all the scriptural texts that we'll be reading during the conference. And when you get back home, try to cross-check them. Cross-check them. You might even get more insight on the things that we are trying to share in the name of the Lord. Now, it said, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of, of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are there which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now the Bible is giving us an instruction, an insight, and this insight is prophetic. Paul trying to bring his spiritual son to some understanding that will be so relevant in the practice of his own ministry first of all paul brings this young lad this young preacher into the understanding of what we call the spirit of the last days and the operation of the spirit of the last days and and those manifestations there are owing to the presence of the spirit of the last days do you understand what i'm talking about it's as if the social structure of life on earth was going to experience a shift and the shift that is going to come upon the social structure on earth is not because there is a, a change in the economy it's because there is a change in the political landscape it's because the spirit of the last days is in operation and that's why you are going to find that there's going to be a shift of human behavior a change in human behavior now, verse 8 is my emphasis. Verse 8 says, Now, that means in the present time, as genies and jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. My emphasis is the example of that the Bible gave. Ushers, if the seats are finished, begin to identify our people. And when more people come, ask our people to stand up. 
Let the people sit down. Amen. They will give you understanding. I served as an usher for a long time. And when people sat down, I was doing what? Standing up. It's not too much to do for the Lord. Amen. Now the Bible says something. Please listen. Okay, I guess there are some seats. Please get them. Now look, 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 look. The Bible says something. The Bible says that as Janice and Jambres resisted Moses, he said the spirit of the last days, walking in men, will make them also resist the truth. You see, the problem we have with that scripture is that there's a similar in the scripture. He said, as Janice and Jambres, indicative of the fact that there's a common ground of comparison. That means we must understand the way Janus and Jambres resisted Moses. In the same way it is applicable to us now. Do you get it? The guys operating under the spirit of this age will be resisting the truth the same way Janus and Jambres resisted Moses. Did you get it to that? If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Oh my God, you are not here. I say if you are here, say amen. amen. Now, so, we need to find out how Janice and Jambres resist Moses. You know, Moses came with his rod of signs and wonders. God met him in the wilderness and said, Thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Hallelujah. And so, Moses came. And one of the signs that God taught him how to use the rod to do was to turn his rod into a serpent. Notice that Janice and Jabris, the, man, the magicians of Pharaoh, also had rods. And they also knew how to turn their rods to serpents. It was so unfortunate that uh, Moses' snake was able to swallow up their serpents, indicative that their rods were swallowed up. And Moses got back his rod. Moses turned water to blood. Janice and Jambres were able to turn water to blood. Moses called forth frogs from the water. Janice and Jambres were able to call frogs from the water. Moses turned dust into lies. Janice and Jambres tried, but they could not turn dust to lies. Then they went back to Pharaoh and said, This is the finger of God. How did they withstand Moses? They withstood, they withstood Moses from the supernatural realm. Not from the natural. They did not come to contend with Moses' doctrine. It was not a doctrinal debate. It was what? It was a supernatural contest. Now, so, what I was trying to tell Timothy was that in the end time, the resistance that we stand against the truth will come from where? The supernatural realm. That's how it's going to be. That's how it will play out in the end time. Resistance will come from where? Let me give you an example. Because I want you to understand as we progress. <laughs> somebody came to me sent his wife to me that I should go and inquire if he will win an election he wanted to contest for the office for the senatorial platform and he sent his wife to me and I entered into the room I, I, I told the wife I'm going to ask God she should give me three days but when I entered the room the Lord spoke instantly he said go tell that woman that let her husband not waste his money so i came out i said mommy wait i have your message already go back tell daddy that he should not waste his money he will not win i think that's fair enough so she now left went and conveyed my message and when my message got got to him not particularly happy especially that there were prophets in the house there prophesying and say we are seeing you on the throne now i 
Uh, there were many <laughs> that were prophesying that. So the moment he picked a nomination from from his party, all right, what happened? He was struck with diverse diseases and sicknesses. He was attacked from the spirit realm. That was the day he knew that politics was not all about collecting nomination form. Politics this day is, is being parlayed from the where spirit realm, and it's only a believer that will come into it in the natural and expect to to meet up. Mm. Somebody in the office brought a herbalist. Do you understand? To the office to fortify his seat. Herbalist, and then two days later, I brought a white garment prophet with some incense. What is he telling you? He has taken the battle where into the supernatural. It will be, it will be, it will be, it will be a foolish of you to want to fight from ground from, from the ground. The Bible is saying that in the last days, the battle against truth, deception, will be fought for them of the supernatural. You get it now. So that's our motivation for this study. That's why we must see the life of Jesus and see the way he, he dealt with demons. He dealt with demons from the realm of the divine supernatural. And there are principles that we can learn from the way he dealt with demons and the host of darkness. We are not just about to learn it, we are to learn it to begin to practice it because Jesus said this is the, the sign. It's a, one of the signs by which we will be identified. The average believer wants to do business as usual. He doesn't know that the thing has been brought into the realm of the supernatural. Somebody is going for an interview. He drinks water. Ah, the snake, small black snake in, you know, three top, three top bottle. Those old three top bottle. He put one black snake there and he put something like water. Came and did incantations and drank to prepare for interview. The believer woke up in the morning. They even pray. Say, la ha ba la ba la ba ba la ba And went for the interview with a tie. A golden tie. Meanwhile, the battle had been taken where? Well into the supernatural. Tell your neighbor, you are not equipped for this journey. You did smile. You are smiling now. That you have not switched. <laughs> He thought it was by nomination form. He didn't know that the rules have changed. When they collect nomination form in the natural, they go to collect another one in the spirit. The Bible says, just as Janus and Jabris withstood Moses, he said the spirit of the age walking through the sons of disobedience will withstand the truth. That's a warning Paul gave to his spiritual son so that he will not be ill prepared for the danger and for the battle that is coming. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't want you to cast out devils because in that act, the visible battle between light and darkness and the supremacy of light is advertised. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Snapshots, four snapshots from the ministry of Jesus. Mark chapter 1, quickly. Mark 1, quickly. Mark 1, quickly. If you are in Mark 1, say amen. I'll read from verse 23 to verse 28. Mark 1, 23 to 28. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out. Now I need to show you some things quickly. This man before this day did not show any sign that he had an evil spirit. Number two. He must have been attending this synagogue for many years. Unperturbed. Undisturbed. Okay. And then as Jesus was preaching, based on the weight of the anointing of the spirit that was on his life, there was a reaction. And this seemingly quiet, respectable man 
cried out in a service. Meanwhile, they were not used to such cries in that kind of service. Now, now, now. 80% of or 95% of people that Jesus casted out devils from were not maniacs. Were not from the psychiatric unit of Federal Medical Center. They were normal people doing normal stuff everyday people in fact most of them didn't know that the devil was locking somewhere but when the anointing of the spirit came it revealed something that people did not know even maybe the man himself did not know and suddenly there was a, 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 a an outburst of a manifestation in the natural he cried out the he there is not the man the spirit cried and the man gave the spirit utterance. You get it? Alright, come with me. Amen. Saying, let us alone. What do we have to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Secondly, these demons knew Jesus. They knew Jesus in an instant. Meanwhile, it took the disciples about three and a half years to acknowledge who Jesus really was. They knew Jesus from the standpoint of his reality. Amen. Please help me preach to your neighbor quickly. If you call Satan a, a, a liar, it is true. Preach, preach, preach. If you call Satan a mother, it is true. But if you call him a fool, it's not true. Paul came to preach in a certain city and there was a woman operating with a spirit of divination. He saw Paul, knew him, knew his apostolic company, said, this man are servants of God. Meanwhile, the people in the city did not know. I need you to understand that demons have strange intelligence. Strange intelligence. Their intelligence actually supersedes the intelligence of a natural man. Strange intelligence. And because of this equipment that they have, there is only one way you can change them. I know Several calls, several sex, several claim to be able to exercise demons. Hallelujah. And there are several manipulations from the kingdom of darkness that can be put on display and make people think that demons are being casted out. Because it is possible. For somebody that understands the language of darkness. Especially people that are mediums. That have familiar spirits. We will go into that tomorrow night. So that you see all the seven dimensions of the occult. And those seven dimensions of the occult today. There are pastors that use one or two of those dimensions now. If your eyes are not open to know what is true and false. You might be bound down to a God that Paul does not know. If that person is somebody that has a, is a medium, one that has a familiar spirit, he can actually go into a truce with that spirit through his guardian spirit. All right, you don't believe me, okay? In Kano, a young boy was in my class, and normally I was a classroom teacher, and I miss the classroom till today. Hallelujah! I used to teach physics. I taught further mathematics. I taught geography. And when I teach for a while, I, I punctuate and I preach the gospel. The gospel of power. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and this guy believed the gospel and came with a charm. When the charm was opened, there was an Arabic inscription in the charm. And we had to look for an interpreter. And when it was interpreted, it meant Satan make his body well but take his soul to hell alright 
it means that a higher demon had demanded that a less a lesser demon should go that's not casting out devils that's negotiation in fact at the end of the day his case is going to be worse than it was before some of the things you guys watch on christian television how i wish you can follow those people home and know their state after three weeks darkness has come into the tabernacle into the temple and all kinds of things are being released i pray god will open your eyes too as you are watching christian television all right that one day your eyes will open so that you will see the people that preach for what they are how i wish you will follow them back home for three weeks and find out what really happened there's only one day you can, one way you can drive out a demon because it's, a, it's an intelligent entity an intelligent being the bible says that the demons knew jesus and they cry out we know thee a woman attended a service like this and the spirit began to speak and he said right now your sister is traveling is going to the village and they are approaching enugu now go and call your sister and tell her to come back because if she goes she will not come back so this, the lady went out and then came back and said the mtn line is not going the preacher said but she has glow and the sister said i don't have the glow number say okay zero eight zero five this this that that the lady went and called the number and said where are you say we're approaching enugu say turn back now five minutes after they turn back the mother of the girl called and said why did you turn back demons are more intelligent than you think you can't fight them with this your brain your brain is too dull they are not abreast with sufficient facts to contend with the devil i need to tell you that it's only by the ancient wisdom of the holy spirit and by the authority that is in christ jesus that you can contend with them and expel them now follow the follow the follow this example critically hallelujah and when the unclean spirit and jesus rebuked him saying hold thy peace and come out of him when the unclean spirit had torn him it means there was a physical manifestation and cried with a loud voice he came out of him now let's notice something when the unclean spirit had what turned him underlined him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him underlined he and him who was the one that was torn the man who turned who who tore him it was the unclean spirit and the bible said he came out of him did you notice that let me take you to another scripture quick 24 saying let us alone what do we underline we oh you're not with me underline we now so you see sometimes it's singular some other times it's what plural that's what we call the demonic gang now let me show you that one the demonic gang every gang has a leader Abby. the gang leader is the one that speaks on behalf of the gang if you meet somebody that is not the gang leader and negotiate with him eh, it will not work you are wasting your time because you have not spoken to the gang leader you get it so there are times where the demons are expressed the will in their duplicity is expressed through the gang and they are called we do you want to destroy us before our time see many and then the bible says and he left him as if it is one can you say that 
when you are expelling demons the last to leave is the gang leader why it is the gang leader that secured the right of occupancy the realm of the spirit is a legalistic realm do you hear that how is the realm of the spirit you don't just operate anyhow there there's, must be a reason why something happens in the realm of the spirit there must be a reason why that demon could find that soul as a, a basis of accommodation and it is the gang leader that has access to the legal right that gives him the right of occupancy the other spirits are members of the gang most of the time it is the gang leader that speaks on behalf of the gang do you understand and the time that somebody's deliverance is perfected is when the gang leader goes in order for you to be able to drive the demons and drive the gang leader there are a few things you need to know because the realm of the spirit is a legalistic realm and the gifts of the spirit that must be in operation in your life in order for you to bring that person to a point of total deliverance because it's possible for you to drive out a few demons and the gang leader has not yet gone he will call them back after three weeks hallelujah now there are several reactions that must take place in order for you to be able to drive those demons out some reactions i know that every believer has access to authority but it's not every believer's authority that is functional amen not every believer's authority is functional but every believer has the potential of authority now what this jesus when he was when when the bible illustrated um, the scenario of Jesus and the centurion. The principle of authority was illustrated. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Ah, time is not on our side. But I'm going to jump some of our, our lessons so that we can finish quick. When Jesus was discussing with the centurion, Jesus unraveled several things that had to do with authority. I hope you know that the centurion happened to be a soldier. And a soldier, the military system, is a system that is established on authority. You are firm about issues of authority. Okay? Now, this guy comes to Jesus and says, One of my servants is sick. I love the man. I want you to pray for him. Jesus now says, Okay, all right. You know why? One of the reasons why I believe Jesus accepted was because in those days it was rare for you to find somebody that would speak for his son like that he did not bring the case of his son he did not bring the case of his wife or his wife's relative he brought the case of what wow so that caught Jesus' attention and Jesus was ready to go with him to his house then suddenly the man said I'm sorry I'm a Roman okay you may not need to come into my house. You know, if you know those days, the Jews were so strict, they don't come into the house of a non believer. And that was why James was sent people to Peter. When Peter was eating with the Gentiles, and people from James came, Peter now refrained. And then Paul did what? He rebuked him. He said, Hey, this is hypocrisy. <laughs> because of the Jewish laws. So you know that the Jerusalem church then was a mixture of christianity and, and judaism they were mixing both and people did not understand the impact of the ministry of paul the true impact of the ministry of paul was that he separated judaism from christianity that was paul's ministry was able to reveal to us the accurate perspective of christianity as opposed to judaism so you see the roman knew that according to jewish laws was not supposed to be in his house. So the Roman now said, Okay, I am a man that is set under authority. I have people above me that I receive orders from, and there are people also that I give orders to. 
You see, I have authority to give people orders because I myself am set under authority and I receive orders. And the way I see you cast out devils, I see authority in manifestation. And I know that the only way you can have this authority is that there is another authority that you are subject to. That's the only way you can exercise this spiritual authority. Spiritual authority is active. We, we all have the potential of spiritual authority as Christians. For, but for many of us, our potential is not active because you are not a man that is set under authority. Hmm. Many Christians want to govern themselves, but that is not the way of the kingdom. The way of the kingdom is accept the government of God over your life. God decides who you marry. He decides what you do. decides what you spend your life upon. But you have already articulated everything. You have worked it out. Then you now say, Lord, bless it in the name of Jesus. Now God will bless it as much as he can. Alright? But you see, you are not under authority. And there are several dimensions of authority that will not be revealed in your life because you are not a man set under authority. So when the man gave that illustration, he said, Jesus, as I see you now, exercising authority is because you are a man set under authority. So you don't need to physically come to my house because you are operating from the realm of the spirit and there's no space, there's no distance in the spirit. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. You see the principle now? Hallelujah. Now, if you are somebody that is disobedient to the Holy Spirit, you might rebuke a demon and the demon will not go. Because the Bible says, you need to... <laughs> you can only revenge every disobedience when your own obedience is complete. I was in a crusade and two brethren were struggling with a demon in one lane. And then I was tired. That's why I called them to help me out. They issues were many so i said please you guys ah don't allow my back break and i saw some people struggle and when i came there i said leave her and the, the, the demon left then one of the brothers kept quiet he came later and said why did the spirit not go? because you did not say anything that we did not say we are told the demon leave was it a bass voice leave now, <laughs> it had nothing to do with the boys. If you are a man set under authority, those demons are intelligent beings and they know who can cast them out. He said, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Your own information is not in the data bank. And they beat the man. They beat them. Do you get it now? You must be a man that is set under authority. The average Christian these days wants to live large. He wants to be in charge. But yet he wants the best of God. Please help me preach again. Don't fool yourself. T tell your neighbor. You can never get the best of God until you are consecrated absolutely to the will of God. Just in case you read your Bible and you, and you, you read and it states you shall be blessed in the city and you shall be blessed outside of the city. Don't claim it. You know, we are so intelligent, we know how to claim. But the Bible said God cannot be mocked. If you are living in the center of God's will, and you are serving God's will, it means you are going on God's errand. That's why God takes responsibility for you. Because you didn't send yourself. He did what? He sent you. So he will have to defend you because you are going on his errand. Who told you to, that lady you have been about for the past three days, who three years? Who told you to go with that lady? You have gone on a journey of your own devising, and so the circumstances and the implications of that your journey is on your head. But I assure you, if your heart is broken or something else breaks, and you come back to God, He will bring cutting wool. You know He's a good God. He said, I was actually saying stop. I was actually saying, stop. I was saying, stop, actually. <laughs> He's a good God. Say, say God, is a good God. God is a good God. That's what it means when we say God is a good God. But you see, many people do not survive the effect of that kind of rebellion. 
The devil is not as lenient sometimes. He cuts them off and he gives them a scar that cannot be repaired. It is only when you are running God's errand that he takes responsibility for you. The average Christian wants to live large, but yet he wants the best of God. You are in limbo, fooling yourself. Because God will only take responsibility for people that are carrying out his errand. Meanwhile, God is such a God that he cannot but give. So he gives to unbelievers, gives to everybody, and so he can still afford to give to rebellious people somehow. But that's not a proof that he will defend you because you are on your own journey. Did you understand that now? All right. Now, so in order for you to have capacity to expel the leader of the gang, your life must be right. You must be in alignment with God because that guy is there legally. He has a certificate of occupancy. You must come with a, an authority system that is superior with, to the one that he has in order for him to go. Are you with me now? Okay. Let's jump. Definition of terms. Let's do some definition. Ah, no, 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 no. We can't go there. Let's do this one first. I need to show you from the Bible that nobody was sent by Jesus for evangelism. Hear me. I've studied this one carefully and I make an absolute statement. Nobody was sent by Jesus for evangelism that did not have the ability to expel demons. Just in case somebody claims he's doing evangelism and he does not have the ability to expel demons, that is not, is fake. That template is a departure from the prescription. Oh, you are not with me. You are not with me. I remember those days we were taught how to do evangelism, how to break in, how to take advantage of the moment you moving through the discussion that is already on ground, how to distribute tra tracks. We were never taught how to cast out devils. Why? I'll show you from the Bible. Jesus, first of all, he sent the twelve. And if you check what he told them in Matthew chapter 10, their marching orders was that they should preach the kingdom, they should heal the sick, they should raise the dead, and they should cast out devils. When Jesus sent the 70, he gave them the same orders. He said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. No, cleanse the lepers, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. In the New Testament, you find that there are 28 apostles that are mentioned. 28. But only one evangelist mentioned. Philip. Are you with me? And we will see the picture of Philip's ministry in the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. He preached Christ. He preached the kingdom. People saw miracles, the signs. And then people also saw demons crying out with a loud voice we were taught how to distribute tracts how to preach in buses hallelujah how to bring a message in fact there was a tract we were given that tract was written by great commission that was my major evangelism too it was already captured step by step step by step if you can engage the person to go through the tract there is a, a, a well articulated progression of discourse and philosophy to bring the person inevitably to the point of saying the sinner prayer but in my practice of evangelism i found that not everybody that said the sinner prayer gave his life to christ Ah, I was in canon. I was in a fellowship. Are you still with me? We had some people in the choir. Oh, let me stop. de <laughs> It's when I started reading the writings of First John 
that have found out that John was a prophet. He gave us added insight that Peter did not have. You know, Peter was the apostolic evangelist. Paul was the teaching apostolic teacher. John was the apostolic prophet. He operated in the apostolic office and the prophetic office. Peter operated in the apostolic and evangelical office. Like Ben Sinahosa. People that have this combination are the strongest. Apostolic and evangelical. Signs and wonders, strange. Paul was apostolic and teaching. But you see, based on the prophetic edge of John, he was able to reveal to us that no one had come to the altar to say the enchantment go back saved i found out that there are some people that you need to cast out devils from and even demand that they bring the articles of divination and destroy it and confess publicly before you can minister salvation to them and so you are you are not equipped for evangelism no matter your name if you are not have not been taught how to expel demons. Have you ever seen a crusade before? No demon was casted. That's not a crusade. You cannot improve on the, on the ministry of Jesus. I don't intend to do that. Our call is to maintain the same quality throughout all generations. And he said, Lo, I am with you. Always, I will confirm your words the same way my words were confirmed towards the end of time. It means there is no allocation, no possibility of improvement. It might be sociologically or politically right for you to expel demons because it will make dignified people look dishonored. Friends, it is better for you to be dishonored for 12 minutes. I'm sure you'll get your honor back actually. And the honor will be better. And so you don't claim to be an evangelist if you don't have the power to expel devils. Because that's the hallmark of the evangelical ministry. The evangelist is a fighter. He's a warrior. He's going to come against the kingdom of darkness outrightly. He's not going to come with this guy. He will come clear. And his ministry must be revealed by the ability to expel demons. Check now. You will think of some evangelists. You find out some evangelists that only do soul winning. No miracles. No signs. No demons going out. And as wonderful as it was, millions of people came to give their life to Christ. But that template is wrong. That's what I'm saying. And I checked it in the entire New Testament. There's no example of somebody doing evangelism dispatched by Jesus that did not know how to drive out devils. No one. Have you ever done evangelism before? Let me see your hand. You preach to somebody about Jesus. Now you will go better. Because you will find some people that you need to cast out some things from their life before your message will even enter. Because the Bible says if our gospel be hid, it is hidden unto them that are lost, of whom the God of this world has blinded their hearts and their minds lest the light of the glorious gospel which is the image of Christ should shine on them you can't do it without casting out devils are you still with me now That's one. definition of terms one who is a demon or what is a demon okay who not what demons are persons without bodies persons and that's why the bible refers to them as he left him is a person he has a mind has a will has abilities he can talk he can hear he's intelligent and he's also legible he can read persons without bodies i hope you got that definition persons without bodies two what is the assignment of demons twofold first to keep you from making christ your savior 
Secondly, to keep you from serving him effectively. And let me use a scripture to illustrate this. Come with me to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, chapter 13. Twofold agenda of demons is to keep people from serving Jesus. And when they fail in the first assignment, from accepting Jesus as Savior, when they fail in, in the first assignment, the next assignment is to keep them from serving him effectively. Now come with me to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, quickly. Acts 13. Acts 13. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 13, from verse 6, the Bible says, And when they had gone through the isle of Paphos, they found a sorcerer, a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. This guy, Paul, invited Barnabas and his interest was that he wanted to hear the word of God. Now let's see what the sorcerer does now. Verse 8, but Elimas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Can you see that? He did not want, the demons that were operating through him were trying to refrain the deputy from the faith. But there's something I know you did not see in that verse. Now, two people there are three people in the in the action. Paul and Barnabas, the deputy, and the sorcerer. Do you get it now? He wanted to turn the deputy from what? From the faith. But how did he do it? He withstood Paul and Barnabas. So that in their service, their service will be truncated. Their service will be resisted. So if you are an unbeliever, he will turn you from the faith. And if you are a believer, he seeks to withstand you. Have you are you here and and you wanted to pray some time ago and just found out you could not pray? It means the rest of you are a prayer maniacs. You roll in prayer. Let's do it again. You wanted to pray one morning and just found out. The ability to do so was no longer with you. <laughs> now, that's a situation that can be probably demonic. You have been withstood. Can you see that? Do you realize that the devil has the capacity to withstand a man for one year? And the truth of the matter is that if you stop praying, your old sins will come back. If you stop praying, it means you are, you, are, you are no longer looking to Jesus for help. Your old infirmities will find expression. Your, your tongue that knows how to meander will start meandering again. Because the grace of God is no longer available to stay it under the auspices of God's power. How many of you have problems studying your Bible here? Now, this is not a place to lie, okay? If you were studying your Bible, my God, you'll be burning. Let's do it again. You have problems studying your Bible. Let's see. You can smile as you lift your hands. Smile. So, we know there's no problem. <laughs> Amen. He withstood them. Friends, we all struggle sometimes. You can be enjoying some. Do you, re do you realize... If you have a prayer meeting you go to every day, that day that you don't feel like going, if you decide and struggle and go, do you know that the Holy Ghost normally visits that day? Has it happened to you before? What happened to you was that you were being whisked to. And people do not understand that that activity is demonic. Because there's something you are going to break into. That the devil knows that intelligence has seen 
And now he has gone to withstand you. I have to stop here. I just have 20 more minutes to go and I think we need to use it to pray. I wanted to show us the activity of demons. I found nine from the Bible. The activity of demons. You don't need to have the gift of word of knowledge to, to know that the presence of demons are at work. Now, see, these activities of demons, I... I use nine verbs to connote them. Verbs. Why did I use verbs? Because a verb is a doing word. A verb is an action word. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? Now, so in scripture, these nine things are actually activities. They are doing stuff. They are activities. Whenever you notice these activities, you need to under oh my god, I've missed something. Ah. Lord help me. If you notice those activities, it's indicative of the fact that demons are behind it. There are nine. <coughs> now, see, tomorrow I will show you, tomorrow morning from 9 a.m., we'll have so much time, about four minutes to teach. I will show you two words used to describe the situation of people that are possessed of devils. One of them connotes ownership. That means a person has a demon in his spirit. That's a different scenario. And if somebody has a demon in his spirit, he's not born again. Because the demon will lay claim to him as his property. There's something you need to know. If you are going to expel those kind of demons, that you must know some tips. There are some tips you need to know. The second one is Diamond Inzomai which means demonized. He is not possessed. It's not in his spirit that the demon hangs. But there's an area of his life that the demons have control. He doesn't have control of that area of his life. Are you with me now? So, this second category, Christians can be demonized. Christians cannot be possessed. But I need you to understand this. If you are casting them either possession or demonization, the reaction is the same. The pattern of Jesus is that the demon was casted out, but the man remained in the church. But today we cast the people out from the church. What do you do? Cast the spirit out. You leave the man in the church. That's the way. Okay? Christians, many Christians are demonized. In fact, if my statistics is correct, 80% of Nigerian Christians are demonized. Somebody said, this pastor came to insult us. No, sorry. All right, let me give you some scenarios. There's a lady that I, I told you about. She must eat beans every day. If she remembers 12 midnight that she has not eaten beans, she says, hey, I have not eaten beans. And she starts cooking. Now, she's no longer in control of her eating it means a spirit of gluttony has taken over you don't get it you don't get it can a christian be a gluton no ba. <laughs> hallelujah tomorrow i will show you the the, the difference between the flesh and demonic activity Somebody was into serious fornication before he gave his life to him. And he, Jesus accepted him. And then he fell into fornication again. He came back. He was led through a prayer of rededication. Commitment to God. God goes to work. He is delivered. Do you understand it? But if after repenting, that person finds that there is a power, he cannot help himself no longer in control of himself as far as that scene is concerned a demon has entered Do you get it if the person is no longer in control of that area the issue is no longer his will cannot stop him anymore 
it is a spiritual case a demon of immorality has entered and a christian can have a demon of immorality in his life and i've met pastors that have that problem should i go on Whenever he notices that he's no longer in control. I will show you that the devil is not a fool. He's a thief, but not a fool. I'll show you the way the demons enter people. And a demon can be silent in somebody's life for 21 years. Except the anointing reveals it. Most demonic operations in the life of people start from the either from the womb to the age of five tomorrow and the person just grows up and there's something he cannot control then he now say this is me this is how i am and if you don't know that is wrong you will not be desperate for change and a man that is not desperate cannot be free because most people you meet are like Simon the sorcerer. When Simon the sorcerer, he said sinner prayer. Philip, in his evangelical ministry, accepted him. And then Paul came with the apostolic ministry and discerned that he did not have a part in the church. And uttered some strange statements against him. And then he now said, pray for me. So that these things you have said will not happen to him. You see what he's doing? He turns the responsibility of his deliverance to the preacher. That's not how it's supposed to be. He's telling the preacher to be desperate to deliver him. He himself is not desperate. To be free from darkness. Are you still here? Now, there are many people that are not desperate. And because of lack of desperation, God will not attend to their case. They want the preacher to be desperate for help. I will show you, just in case there's an area of your life that is under the influence of demons, I'll show you what you can do even without a preacher. Alright? And how to discern them. And things to avoid. Some disciplines to keep. You don't have liberty to do any kind of things and just expect to be free. Don't empower your flesh. Now, so we are going to look at several things and key things that believers are careless about that opens doors to demons. You see. So I have nine verbs for you. Are there nine? Okay, I removed one for personal reasons. But have eight verbs now. Tomorrow we are going to look at them. I don't want to go past my time. We have three sessions for teaching. And one session. Sunday night, the deliverance service. But I'd like you to follow through. Because when we do the deliverance service, there's a commissioning. We have to go out and have the experience of casting out devils. You just find out. If you do some things that you'll be taught. That people in your office, some of them have, have demonic issues. Hallelujah. And there are several things you, you can do that even in the office, somebody can begin to manifest in the office. Not because you made any attempt to pray for the person. You did something. And the demon will be exposed in the office. Are you still with me now? You went to the village and brought a housemaid. Unknown to you, she's loaded. With this my nine part check, even without the operation of the word of the gift of word of knowledge of the discernment of spirit, you will that this one has a demon. The Bible speaks exclusively, very in detail, about the activity of demons. If you give yourself to careful study, you will be able to realize that. Now, demons not only dwell in people, demons dwell, there are some demons that are in places, operating places. But you see, because demons do not have bodies, anytime they are outside of bodies, they suffer. 
they suffer terribly and they like to possess bodies because they are suffering with envy you might ask me why do demons choose to possess men why not cats dogs sometimes they possess dogs and cats actually but let me show you why they possess men finally before you leave genesis chapter 3 Genesis 3, why do demons like possessing men, people, human beings? In Genesis chapter 3, if your Bible is turned, look at verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. Now, let's stop there. Notice the Bible says what? Who made the serpent more subtle? Who? God. Means it's a natural endowment. Is that so? Uh, we will need an English student to help us quickly before we close. What is subtlety? Ben? What is subtlety? We are there. Don't run away. She doesn't want to answer me. Somebody help me quick. Yes, yes. Subtility. What's it? Cunning. Cunning. All right. Cunning. Now, so by default, the serpent was created with, with, with cunning craftiness over and above every creature which God had what? Made. That one is a natural endowment. The assignment that the devil wanted to carry out in the book of Genesis chapter 3 was an assignment that required subtlety. Required cunning craftiness. That means I'll be saying something, but I'm not saying what I mean. Where I'm going is different from what I'm saying, but I'm allowing you to believe some things. And you're moving with me. By the time I arrive where I'm going, I'll pretend as if that's not where I'm going. And I will, I will have locked you into that spot and made you take a decision by bypassing your own way. You get it? So the devil knew that the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And the assignment of deceiving man will require subtlety. The devil, he could not find any other creature that had that potential more than the serpent. And so he possessed the serpent. Now, see, when he possessed the serpent, he, his demonic dimension gave life and fully articulated the potential that was endowed upon the serpent by default, by nature. And through that inherent capacity and potential that the serpent had, the devil was able to meander and find the expression and he was able to move in subtlety in the fullest extent. That was how he achieved. You get it? Are you still with me? Good. You are seeing it now. Demons like possessing human beings because human beings afford them the greatest expression. You get that now? Only God can show you the capacity of your mind. Only God. <laughs> your imagination. Your will. Your emotion. Demons have best expression when they possess men because of the magnitude Endowment that God the man. The other day we were going to modern market and we saw one man riding a beetle. Do you know beetle? Volkswagen beetle. I thought they had been scrapped. But from the look of things, the man's own was newly painted. That means it was newly revived. Now, I was trying to wonder where did he find the parts? Because the sound was still okay. If you, are, if you ride in Volkswagen B2, all right, and somebody is in Toyota Avalon 2012 model, 
Now, you see, in Avalon, they don't use cable for the throttle anymore. Now, in, if you are riding a plane, the plane has a lever that makes it fly. That lever, there's no connection of any cable to the plane. It's just electrical conductivity. So Toyota, from 2003, imported the technology that they use in planes and brought it to a car. You might raise the handbrake of Avalon, 2011. There's no connection of that handbrake to the wheels. It's electrical conductivity. Hallelujah. My God. When you press the throttle, the car gives you a similar sound like the engine of a, an airplane. It peaks as if it's a ritual. You know, I had one before. I had one on that level. And I know what I used to do in Wurukum roundabout. Before the volume B2 and all the rest pick up, my God, I'm, I'm on my way because I have more expression with Avalon. Do you get that now? Your B2 can go to the roundabout and die there. Eh? And you are trying to revive it. That's expression. You are saying, go, the B2 say, I'm dead. <laughs> but you see, when you are in Avalon, before you say, I want to go, they can now say, where? That's expression. It translates what is in your mind as if the gear system was hooked onto you like hand and glove. Demons like people because of expression. Let's stop there tonight. Can you rise up for the next five minutes? Let's touch heaven for five minutes. Give me volume on the keyboard. God has called you and me to cast out devils. If you exempt that from your life, the template you are running with is three quarter compared to the pattern we receive from Jesus. The Bible says that as Janice and Jabres withstood Moses, people operating under the spirit of the age will withstand the truth that we carry. That means the battle goes into the realm of the supernatural. Can you pray tonight and say, Lord, equip me for this battle? I've been operating and fighting in the natural. I thought that my will had power. Friends, we are not talking about willpower now. We are talking about supernatural power. Power that can make visible the defeat of Satan. Power that can change things in the realm of the spirit. A lady came to me for counseling in Lagos. She said that her husband is wicked. He doesn't come home in the night. While I prayed, I saw that it was demonic, that a spell was casted upon the man. Many times believers to change things orchestrated from the realm of the spirit. They want to change it in the natural. Through nagging and all that, all you fail. Go into the realm. It's time to leap in the spirit so that we can have power with God to prevail with men. When Jacob came to Bethel, he wrestled with an angel for the first time. He was forced to go into the realm of the supernatural. When he was able to stand till the break of day, his name was changed. The angel said like a prince, you have power with God and you have prevailed. When a man comes to that point where he has power with God, he prevails with men. The battle must be taken into the realm of the supernatural. The time for the old church is over. Jesus demands something new. His example has been compromised. 
This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Make sure you're praying tonight. Sabro malate malenda na makade masaya. Ambra masela balo ne bani na makayemo. Sanda na baleta ma. Akela na masole barase na kaya na ba. Zaina mandole mo. Zaina na Mama le la le ba so de ma kadene Pray la ma na me sa pray la la ba Na na la ma no me le Se na 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 ma kadene Ska me la bo re ma na ma na me se na ma na Se na ma na ba na ba Ma bre sa ne ma ne ta ma na ke na de mo ne Me you need to upgrade your evangelical ministry. <laughs> you must be known as a man that has the ability to expel demons. Egamana maske maya, abrasa na mana 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 ba, rasa mana mana dema kaya na. Every day, your name is the same. She's a, she's a, how I love. Our Lord, calling your name, Jesus, 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 Jesus. every day. day. Your name name is the same, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, how I love calling your name. Your name. Jesus. 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 Oh, oh. Every day. Every day. Your name. Listen to me. Listen to me before I sit down in the name of Jesus. Now, every time Jesus came for a healing service, he ended up casting out devils. Every time. Every time. Because most of what you call evil is demonic. There's a spirit. So a spirit can take residence in your body as a spiritual dimension of a sickness. Right? A spirit can take residence in someone's soul as the major cause of on, on ending depression. Okay? A spirit can even be afflicting somebody spiritually by bringing accusations. 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 You see? And when a man's come is not steady, there's a hole in his armor. I'm, give, I'm telling you things that you meet on the field of deliverance. Your conviction is your line sense. And there are several people here of 
dying under the weight of accusations. It's a spiritual assault. It's trying to wither and weaken your conviction. And that's your license on the field of deliverance. I just saw in the spirit, before I sit down, I saw somebody that in this congregation used to have excruciating waist pains. From what I see, it's not a medical case. I've been able to prove to myself conclusively that believer can be tormented by a devil. Because... I've even seen a church, a fellowship that is bewitched, a whole fellowship. And the Bible speaking in the book of Galatians, Paul said, who bewitched you? Oh, Galatians, that was a church. A, an entire church can be bewitched. Send that. You, be, you believe me, I know. <laughs> bewitched. And when somebody comes and wants to bring light, they will attack you as if you are the devil. Don't fight the people. No, they are puppets in the hand of a slave master. You need to be skillful. Don't fight men. Go into the supernatural. In one church, I won't mention the church. There's one guy that used to prophesy there. He say, let us fast for three days. Somebody's about to die. And the church fasts person still died and he is not able to be obligation to be I speak in parables until a real prophet came I say why are you here <laughs> why are you here the man said me what did I do <laughs> you don't know what you did you want me to kill you he said, sorry, 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 sorry. But what did I do? Hey! Then he knelt down. Then he asked, how long have you been doing this thing? 15 years. Why are you carrying paralysis on your hand? Hey. The pastor almost fainted. Because all the advice he receives to run the ministry comes from this prophet and that congregation was bewitched. That's the kind of congregation you can go and preach in and demons will attack you after you finish preaching. Has it happened to you before? Uh, it has never happened to you. Oh, you hear God well before you go out. <laughs> you can preach somewhere and die by 12 midnight. You don't know? <laughs> I've experienced many things. I've been to a place where a demon appeared to me because I came there to preach. Meanwhile, there were believers there. I've seen that. I've been to a place, the neighbor, the woman staying close to where I was staying, sharing. Uh, if you go through my wall, the woman there was a white garment woman. She came and said, Pastor, Pastor, come. Let me advise you. <laughs> because she had the spirit of divination working in her. I said, Do you know me? Then she now went back. Because if you receive advice from somebody that operates with a spirit of divination, you have sought from a demon what you should only seek from God. That spirit of divination will have influence over your soul except you confess what you did as a sin and repent and cast out that spirit. It will subdue you. You have visited the forbidden territory. We'll look at it tomorrow. Forbidden territories. Many believers go there and come out and you want to still live a normal life. Hey. I'm not talking about those of you that are carrying charm. You have charm at home. Or you used to do charm before. We'll come to you tomorrow. Don't run tomorrow. Don't run. This weekend, God instructed me so that people can be free to do the will of God. Many people have done all kinds of stuff. They think by coming to church and joining the choir that it will go. No. You don't understand that the spirit realm is legalistic. There is an approach towards deliverance. And deliverance is possible for you just because you are saved.
If not, they pray. Eh? He says, shall the prey be taken out of the hand of the mighty? It's just salvation. If not, that man is called mighty. Don't deceive yourself. Don't say, the devil has no power. Don't, stop saying those things. You have not been a Christian too long. That's why I said that. He has power. He has power. Acknowledge it because the Bible does. But he doesn't have as much power as God. I follow him. And that's why there are some very strict laws God gives in the scriptures which I want you to see tomorrow. The average Christian is loose. Just a. Huh. Somebody here used to have excruciating pain on your waist. Excruciating pain. It's not medical. I saw it in the spirit. It's demonic. Come out. Let's relieve you of that body. On your waist. Let's relieve you. Excruci is demonic. It's demonic. I've seen it. We can let it go. Release it. Now, we'll, oh my God, we don't have time. We don't have time. We'll, 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 we'll do so that we can close today. On the waist, the pains on excruciating pain. Sometimes it's difficult for you to be hurt. It's demonic. When Jesus went for healing campaigns, he expelled demons. He dealt with them in one sweep. Healing, expelling of demons. On the waist. Before you leave, I would like you to do something quickly. Stretch forth your hand and pray for the ones in front. Don't be so selfish as to go now because we are not praying for you. Father, in the name of Jesus.